Joining us right now on the phone is the man who exposed the Bigfoot hoax, Steve Culls, private investigator and executive director of SquatDetective.com. The numbers of sightings, even if you take 99% of them and put them in the trash can, you turn around and you still have that 1% that can't be explained. Well, we need to explain it. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on and I see this creature. Went to look forward and there was a big black thing is all I can call it. It's the whole time, the whole thing was shadowing us, right behind us, right on the side of us. I still see that damn thing to this day. It wasn't 20 feet from me. You could see it standing from the moonlight in the tree line. I was just scanning right to left, and it reminded me of, like, a gorilla. Get somebody out here. Son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Welcome to Squatch DTV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch DTV for today's date, September 17, 2023. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Calls along. Well, no Chris tonight, but tonight to back up, I got Mike Ann right oh. down there. Hello, Mike. Hello, Steve. And how are you doing tonight? I am marvelous. Yes, Chris needed the night off, so we graciously gave him the night off. So yes, and uh, and uh, just to add a little uh, flair to the fun, um, our our guest is right now AWOL. So hey, up oh, wait here she is. Uh, there she's coming through, coming through, coming through. You can get this back up there. There we are. Hello, Monica. Hi. Well, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a while, and it's uh, so awesome to uh, sit and talk with you again. And uh, of course, kind of a strange night. Chris Bennett, my normal co-host. Yes, can you hear us? Uh oh. Uh oh, she froze. Oh, uh, you can you hear us now? Oh no! All right, so yeah, let's... it's cutting in and out. I don't know. It's probably okay. on my end. Yeah, it's probably the uh, internet, which does that occasionally. So um, the way we kind of try to overcome that sometimes is if you disable your video, the audio works a lot better. So I know sometimes you don't have to do that. We'll give it a try for a little bit and see if that works, but. We got a hopping chat out there tonight, and uh, uh, tonight instead of Chris Bennett, we have Mike Ann from Tactical Bigfoot Research backing up as co-host. So, you guys want to say hello, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll we'll get into uh, our fun night. So, how you been, Monica? Oh, I see. We're gonna have one of those shows. Yep. Yep. I don't know why so many people are having trouble with StreamYard lately. 
Do you notice that, Mike? Uh, we haven't been on in a couple weeks, but yeah, it's uh, Monica. Are you using a phone or are you using uh, a Direct Connect computer? Yeah, she's typing, uh, and I think she's messaging me. So let me get over here to. And again, we apologize, folks, for the technical difficulties. Uh, and that's there we go. Okay. She's going to try from another location. Okay. So well, uh, anyway, what's new with you, Mike? Uh, I got to stop and see Joe uh, a couple times this week. Um, see how things were going with him and, and uh, Molly and, uh, you know, send the wishes from all of us and stuff like that. So, uh Spirits seem pretty good. Um, trying to get back out in the woods. Uh, we were out a couple weeks ago up here in New York. Uh, looking for Whitehall there. In, uh, two weeks for you and I to get together and get out there in the Adirondacks and see some of our folks. You know, yeah, we are going to be doing that on um, uh, on, October, on September, September 29th. Yeah. 29th. And uh, usually it's dinner at the rail yard after the event. Yeah. So 29th then, or 30th? It's one or the other. I, I you know, whatever I Saturday is. Yeah, whatever Saturday time. is. Let me take a look at the um, calendar here. And that will be right at the Village Park there. In the thirtieth is Saturday. Okay, so the thirtieth. Yep. So we'll be going out the night of September thirtieth. Yep. And I know we we got a few uh, folks coming from our membership and a few folks. Uh, coming that are direct invites, so we're really looking forward to this. And I see Mike has popped in, uh, or I'm sorry, Matt has popped in yep. from uh, Central Florida Bigfoot as he vacations. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Matthew. Um, and uh, that's right, Brian Barber reports that technical difficulties and Bigfoot go hand in hand. Yes. Or when you put Steve and I together, we tend to break every piece of electronics we, that we can we, find we do we do and then uh so uh but anyway for those wondering uh we're still not quite at goal with joe's uh gofundme yeah. so i'm gonna splash that on the bottom there yeah i brought him and some uh some gummy bears because we always take some gummy bears when we're out in the woods we brought him some hershey kisses because you know matt from central florida wanted us to give him a big kiss so we we took those instead. So, um, Joe, yeah. if you're watching, you know, uh, we're, we're thinking about you. So, Amen. and Chris, same thing, buddy. Um, you know, covering for you tonight. So, you know, it's, it's, we got some stuff coming up. If you guys are in the Northeast there at the end of the month, uh, come on and join us down here. Whitehall. It's a great event. I think Alex, uh, Petikoff will be there. Emily from forest floor. Um, a couple other folks coming down. Brian, I guess is doing a talk yeah. and a tour. Um, it's just a good time, great time of the year to be in that White Hall, Lake George area in New York. And, uh, you know, got a big stage this year. We're going to be doing some stuff on instead of the little corners. So it'll be it'll be a good time. So uh, a lot of good crafters, a lot of cool friends that are doing those kind of things. So hello. And there's Jeremiah from Bigfoot Society. So uh, let's do the roll call while we're waiting, uh, see if Monica can reconnect. So. Let's go right up the list. And this is the fun part where I have to scroll all the way up to this hopping chat. And of course, first in tonight is Lance Windsor. He got the front row seat tonight, followed by Mick Sion and, uh, Siphon and his meatloaf. Uh, Bigfoot Society, Jeremiah is in the house. Charlotte J, Uncle Bones to Low Rider. Hello, Low. John Swan in the house. Grasshopper. Uh, Uncle Bones 2, I think we already said that. Uh, Jay Fritz, another one of our channel members and a great witness. Uh, amazing. Uh, if you haven't heard it, go back and check our archives out to listen to Jay tell his story. Um, uh, let's see. I saw Sharon in here as well. Sharon's in the house. Okay, ready? Here we go. Super Gala, Fragilistic, XB, Ali, Docious, Pie is in the house. Um, so... Uh, Daniel Weeks in the house. Hello, Daniel. Sasquatch Wizard Adirondacks, another one of our members. Hello, greetings, greetings, greetings. Danny Stanton, good to see you, sir. 
Um, who else? Uh, Eyes in the Woods. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, going down, 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 down. Wade Wood, another one of our channel members. Reverend Wade, good to see you, sir. He is from the uh, upper part of upstate New York. I mean, almost as far up as you can get in New York State. Um, DM Zabo in the house. Um, so we got John Ayers there, another local guy. Uh, we got me. um, Media Palace in the house. Hello, hello, hello. And Brian Barber in the house. And let's see if we... There we go. Any better, Monica? Oh, a lot better. I can actually. Oh, hear there we are. Hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know you know. What that was about must have been the room I was in. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes when you're on that that five uh, G bandwidth, it it kind of gets a little tricky sometimes. Yeah. In fact, I don't even go wireless. I have to. I actually have my computers that I use for the the show. I have them hardwired. That's so smart. just just to prevent and uh, when i bought the house the, the beautiful thing was is and hello jen in central florida bigfoot steve former everything in the house so hello guys um uh the buckwist crew is in the house hello hello <clears throat> um when i first got this house they were supposed to have a common uh point to the house where the uh all the so they could put the direct cable right into one line and go throughout the house well, they forgot to connect that. So okay. the cable guy's like, well, I, I got to drill a hole and put the new line in the house. I'm like, fine, you're going to do it in my office because we stream everything else in the house. So I don't need a cable box or anything like that. So that worked out because my, my modem and everything for the house and the line for the internet is like three feet from the computer. So everything worked out wonderful. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to run 75 feet of, uh, which I was doing in my old place. I actually ran a 50 foot piece of um, uh, Ethernet cord, plug it into a uh, a switch, and you know two lines came out of that. So this is much easier. Works a lot, lot great, right. better. I almost I said a lot greater. Ethernet cord back in the day. Oh, <laughs> and, so, yeah, I mean, I, I look at this thing going, well, not too bad. It's pretty much out of the way. But anyway, Monica, how you've how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. Thanks so, for asking. How have you been? It's been so long. It's been forever. Well, you know, um, the kids are growing up. I know. <laughs> that, that brat that I brought many years ago, we bumped into each other over in Ohio. That brat I bought, he is now a state forest ranger. I and, know, I know. I think and, I'm uh, friends with him on Instagram, yeah. so I see I see him yeah. posting stories. Every he now he and then. says that he keeps contact with everybody he met from back in that time he came with me. He well, does. Yeah, he'll say hi every now and then. He'll reach yeah. out, say hi. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so he's having a great time, and you know the funniest thing that ever happened this is a real funny story. Was uh, one day I get a phone call. He goes, "Hey, Dad." I'm like, yeah. He goes, "There ever been a sighting out in Pittsdown State Forest?" I'm like, "No." He goes, "Well, there is now." <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Did he see one or did he get a report while he was He there? got a report. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, somebody said that they seen one. But uh Excellent. yeah, so yeah. It's kind of funny how that works sometimes. But anyway, um so let's let's go back to you. I mean, you know, I you know, it's been a while, so I don't know if you're still actively researching or you know, I know you dabble at least at the very least. Yeah, I do. Uh, I think yeah. Yeah, and as many have. I mean, many in of our many in our group over the years have, uh, you know, like we we've seen Eric, who's uh, Altman, who was kind of out of that mm -hmm. same guy. He was just a couple of years before us, I think. You know, he he gets in, he gets out, he gets in, he gets out. Um, uh, Billy Willard kind of mm -hmm. uh, is uh, uh, hello and thank you, Uncle Bones, with a uh, twenty dollar. <laughs> things you can see from space number one the great wall of china two joe snyder and ross the sighting great pyramid size pile of genesee beer cans <sighs> south park episode in the making cartman makes the trek and yes rasta kills kenny <laughs> very good uncle Pump. and i'm gonna be right in the middle of that oh okay. come <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a while, and but at one time you were very hardcore into research. You were you were out there, and 
the the cool thing I want to know is, is you know you know a lot of people ask all the same questions. How did you get involved in Bigfoot research? All that stuff. I want I want to skip over that. I want to go to uh, um, um, you know what what was your most interesting Bigfoot case you ever investigated? Mm. A case were- that I've investigated. Let's see. Um, I. Th- think well there's interesting as far as like a credibility with the witness i think there was one yeah. out in east texas okay so it was when i was fairly new into the research right i had just joined the tbrc way back in the early 2000s and i was investigating a sighting out in woodville texas and it was a family that had a trailer kind of out in the middle of a field which was interesting because they were in a, a fairly secluded little tract of land, but it was surrounded by the city proper. Now, this is a pretty you know, sparsely populated city uh, anyway. But, you know, they didn't have a real road to their property. You kind of drove through a field and landed there. Um, and we're out there researching and... Um, they claimed that something came up and, you know, was pounding on the side of the trailer. And of course, you know, at the time it was, you know, the, the trailer was 50 years old at least. And there was wow. dents all over it. It's hard for me to say, yeah, oh, yeah oh, it's fresh, <laughs> you know? So I'm out there poking around and the, the mother claimed, you know, they used to keep miniature goats and this thing would come out of the woods, out of the Creek that ran kind of back in the, back in the forest. And uh, it, w- it would come out and it would, um, she saw it one day, lean over the fence and just pick one of the goats up and walk off. And, okay. you know, that was interesting. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, there was nothing out in the pens at this point. Um, I don't, I can't recall if, if she claimed it took them all or if they just got rid of them. But I'm out there, you know, poking around the tree um, that was right next to the pen. There was a pretty, you know, hefty, um, I forget what kind of a tree it was. I want to say maybe it was an oak tree. Um, but it was it was a decent sized tree, but it and she would say that that this creature would would urinate on it as well. And I would say, yeah, I mean something <laughs> something was urinating on it. Uh, it was definitely a pungent smell, definitely a pungent smell. Um, it reminded me a lot of um like a sweaty horse smell if you if you like stables like sweaty horses if you're familiar with that yep and yep, i've yep. heard other reports of people saying um that they they've smelt similar things you know when they've investigated uh bigfoot sightings um and then as well she took her she had her son take me back you know further out into the woods and they were so freaked out by you know these creatures popping up around their property that I had to bring my firearm with me. She would not let me back there unless I was armed. She didn't, and her son as well, not just one of us armed, both of us had to be armed. So we went uh, back out into the creek and um, I did find an interesting print and it was a print. And of course, you know, I'm early in my, sure. my investigation. I didn't have any casting material on me like a rookie. Did the same thing here. <laughs> same thing here. That's happened to like me. Like a too. rookie. It was a rookie move. I didn't have it. That's why I switched to me. 3D scanning and leave the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is long before 3D. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> we didn't even have 2D scanning back yeah, then. Yeah, there was no scanning. <laughs> it was like with your eyes. That's you had film. With. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Uh, it, but it, this wasn't this. I mean, I, I'm I'm just saying. I, I would have loved to have cast this because, you know, like I said, they were they were kind of in the middle of the city. It was still pretty secluded, but there was still you know the populace around them, um, yeah. several acres but that, away. But but, but then again, a rural Texas city, you know, people think cities of the big rolling metropolises like yeah, no, you know, like <laughs> Albany or <laughs> Buffalo or New York. No, yeah. a, a, a Texas I mean, city. If you, Look you up know, Woodville, Texas, and think of it twenty years ago. I promise it's not built up much more than it was twenty nah. years ago. They, I, but, I heard they, I they had to close the zoo, and, and they had to close the zoo because the chicken died. Right. Right. Exactly. So what I found in this this dried up creek bed, because this was you know it, this is in the middle of the summer, um, was the most pristine gator track I have ever seen in my life. And I'm thinking, what in the hell? <laughs> what am I doing of out all here? The tracks to see. There's a 
I mean, it's clearly not fresh. It's dried up, but I'm like, oh, that would be nice to, that would have been nice to, to, to yeah, catch it. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're so. talking East, East Texas then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, uh, so the, was, uh, and, and East Texas, East Texas, of course, that whole Eastern part of Texas, which rolls into Arkansas and the whole Falk area. Yeah. And then yeah. you follow those, uh, if you follow the, uh, those, uh, swamps and those, uh, tributaries northbound, you go into the Oklahoma area that is mm -hmm. very populated in Bigfoot settings as well. So oh, yeah. makes, makes uh, all the sense in the world. Um, so uh yeah that that is really cool any anything ever come of it i mean did you ever do any surveillances that nah not really we did we did we did some um nighttime surveillance not on her property um because she was too scared to let us out there at night oh. um so we did in the general vicinity and i got some interesting eye shine out of it but nothing uh, nothing great but, yeah, you know. nothing nothing to, to nothing to say hey conclusively this is um, no. Right. And that's Although, what's so frustrating, you know, when you, when you, after you research for, you know, decades, it, you know, I've never seen anything. I've never heard, I, I've never come across anything Bigfoot related that I couldn't um, replicate. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I mean? I couldn't say somebody didn't, you know, it could that be was... replicated. <laughs> Yeah, that that was that was my problem up until about 2011 when I walked out to my car and I look and there it is. Yeah. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, I've been looking for you, um, <laughs> sir. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> but they're not very sociable because the minute yeah. <laughs> well, sure, but at least you saw. <laughs> um. So, how about the? Uh, and then we'll get into the the philosophical questions in a little bit. How about uh, a time where you clearly said this person is full of BS? Oh, there's so many. Of those. Yeah. <laughs> were so well, what was your but, best case? You know, here's the thing: is I hate to looking back. I really hate to just call somebody like and tell them they're sure. full of baloney because I didn't see that. I didn't have that experience, and I've had things happen to me that a lot of people would be like. <laughs> sure <laughs> but and you know i mean you, that's why i always say like you have to really take a look at the person like are they unhinged you know do we are we dealing with somebody who's yeah. you know maybe not um not all there but there's still something happened something happened that yep. is causing them to tell you what's going on right um, right you know yeah, very we, we... few people i think just completely just fabricate like just fabricate, you know, I'm not saying it never happens, but I, there's a lot of them where, where I'm just thinking, I'm not saying that didn't happen, but that's, you know, just tough pills to swallow sometimes. All right, right. right. Are you seeing a correlation in a lot of data points with your years of experience? Um, As far as locations go, locations, color schemes, just uh, similarities and traits. You know, you guys were out there pretty much before a lot of these shows were were out rolling yeah. around, and you know, uh, so that yeah, that I mean, data I, I would, play a little bit more into. Yeah, I would say that. Um, I would say that you know, I after hearing everything going on um, back in the day, that I really felt that you know the the southern species was a lot thinner um definitely you know i think they all stick to creeks and waterways but in the south especially um i in the northwest they seem to be bulkier and uh muscular more muscular from the reports and i just assumed that that was because it was a more mountainous treacherous terrain there's just more going on you have to be heavier bulkier to survive out there down here, it's just hot and miserable, even in the winter, typically, you know, yeah. <laughs> migratory patterns, I feel in the south um, are likely, you know, because there's extreme more in weather. Um, in the northwest, uh, probably the same, but I think more up and down just a, a mountain range where in the south, I feel like regions are being traveled. Um, that's what I was is, you know, getting from the data that I was hearing. That's that's what I was concluding for myself. 
And uh, one of our members, Brian Barber, uh, asked, you know, have you investigated outside of Texas? And I know yes. you have. Yeah. Yes. What I have was, investigated what, in Colorado, California, Oregon, and Washington. And what and, was the yeah. Texas? <laughs> well, obviously Texas. Yeah, and Oklahoma <laughs> and uh, Arkansas. Oklahoma, where the winds come. Ooh, anyway, Oklahoma uh, and uh, kind of Georgia, kind of Georgia. Now, let's, uh, uh, out of all those places, what did you find the creepiest? Because mm. I'll tell you why. I went to Oregon, and even in the daytime, that place is like, yeah, I'm looking around going, ugh. Okay, so the creepiest. Like, oh gosh, like in the moment, creepiest was Southeast Oklahoma. Because I had some really just, I had one weekend that was not typical, that was just super, there was just a lot of weird crap happening that weekend. It was very, very creepy in the moment. But as far as long lasting, like I got the creeps after I got out of there. Like it was a little, I mean, I didn't feel too weird while I was there, but afterwards, like I, like something resonated with me and I was having actual nightmares about it after I got out was Colorado. I forgot. Yes. We were in Colorado too. I did take a team out and we were um, in the South San Juan wilderness area for uh, about a week. Um, in Colorado. And once we got out of there, like I said, it was, it was a interesting experience. Like we, we were trying to trek pretty deep in there and we got a few miles in and then we reached a river that was impassable. There was just a ton of snow melt. So we couldn't cross the river that we had um, anticipated crossing. So we were stuck on one side and, you know, made, made the best of it. We were at a pretty high elevation, um, a pretty high elevation. And, um, you know, we stayed there as long as we could. Storms were coming through every night. We had planned this trip, you know, based on um, some research and we were going at the typically driest time of the year. And of course, you know, every day at five o'clock, this thunderstorm would just come rolling over the top of the mountain. And there's nothing like being in a tent in a field with a thunderstorm rolling up at elevation. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but the area itself, like we had a few kind of interesting things happen in camp but once we got out of there and I don't know what it was about the place I mean there are some interesting stories coming out of the South San Juan wilderness and I wasn't really aware of them until after we got out and I was trying to think why am I affected like this like why am I having these I was having a lot of right. nightmares about the place after we got out and what happened wasn't really that scary um and um yeah, I mean, there were just some odd reports, and it's not necessarily like Bigfoot. I mean, there were some, of course, Bigfoot reports coming out of there, but there's all kinds of other things happening back in those mountains, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I found out afterwards, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know, maybe maybe there is something to that, because it, like, it took a while for my mind to, like, calm down from being in there. With Oklahoma, did you come across any of the wild horses or a lot of seismic activity? It seems like there's an earthquake there like every other day and, you know, that tends to throw some folks off a little bit. No, I mean, I grew up in the Bay Area, so seismic activity does not throw me off. I went through the 89 earthquake, so Ugh. Um, yeah. pretty, I, I've been through a few <laughs> actual earthquakes, Okay, uh, but... Uh, never experienced any while I was up in there because we were up, you know, we we're in the Kaimichis. And um, I didn't really uh, see any of the wild horses up there, but that would have been pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to see any kind of wild animal when you're out yeah, there. Yeah. It is. Um, it's nice. Yeah, Except it's for a... snakes. I, I didn't really care for snakes. <laughs> Wasn't really fond of the cotton mouths when they. So I, I'll, I'll, give you, uh, I'll give you a good story. I remember getting out of. Um, out of the, the, the car onto a trail in uh, Whitehall. Um, and this is along the Pulteney River, an area where uh, one of the roads comes really close to the Pulteney River, and you look right across, and it's Vermont. And I, I move about eight, uh, about 10 feet into the trail, and an eight foot corn snake, black, completely black, like almost like a black camo, 
came slithering out and across the trail and into the into the other side. And I was like, oh, my Lord, that's the biggest snake I've ever seen. Of course, Frank, you know, jumped out of his snake boots because he hates snakes. <laughs> and me, I want I wanted to I want to. Oh, it's a corn snake. Let me get it. Yeah. <laughs> but you chased you know, it. Yeah. That sets the tone for the whole hike when yeah. you come across the snake early on. <laughs> But snakes are for some people, not for everybody. I don't mind them. I don't care about them. But, uh, you know, it had it been a tarantula about that big, I probably would have, like, I would have been the one jumping out of my shoes. I don't like big bugs. Yeah, I mean, snakes typically don't bother me, but when I come across venomous snakes and I'm, yeah. you know, an hour and a half away from a road that can even get me to a hospital, I don't, I start really thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, uh, it's very close to a, a mountain over in Vermont that has the highest concentration of rattlesnakes in the Northeast. Oh. Yeah, no. And uh, but now that was that was a corn. Oh, that's a black <laughs> snake. That's safe. That's safe. That's why I take a herpetologist with me. Hanging off of it. <laughs> yeah. But we got you know we also got copperheads out there too that we got to keep mm -hmm. an eye out. Um, but yeah, it's um. So how about the weirdest case? The case that really, really, it may even sound crazy, but what, what would be the weirdest case? And hmm. So I, they were all like, I can't say that I had any like really crazy, weird cases. I had some weird things happen when I was going to, um, when I was doing an investigation, but the, the case itself um, was pretty typical. You know, it's in the tree line, it's looking at me, or, you know, it came up and it looked in my window and, you know, freaked me out. And, or it keeps coming around stealing my goats. I mean, it was all yeah. uh, pretty much the same um, kind of stories. They were all pretty typical. Nothing was, was really, really crazy that I investigated. Um, but the, the really weird one that just, during the investigation, like a lot of strangeness happened, was um, we were uh, checking out a uh, siding up on a reservation up in northern Oklahoma. And we get there and the guy's like, yeah, he shows us this video um, that he took um, of an alleged Bigfoot in the tree line on the res. And I was like, okay, it's, I don't see anything. I see trees moving and, you know, it's VHS. It's kind of grainy. Um, and he said, well, I'm going to take you out there and we'll go out. It's on my cousin's land, you know, and you guys, you know, we had planned on staying the night out there anyway. So there was a group of six of us, I think, six, seven of us. And um, he drove us out to his cousin's land. We get there. Um, I meet his family. Or we all meet his family. And um, they said, you know, we're going to have a, a powwow and try to call him in. Uh, like a drum circle kind of thing. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. And before we go out, he goes, okay, I just want you to know, um, uh, be careful of the dear lady and don't follow the little people. They try to get you lost. And I thought, okay, I will not follow the little people. And if I see the dear lady, I will not follow her either. Well, you, you know what her motto is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know advice. what the dear the dear lady's motto is, right? The buck stops here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, I mean, she wouldn't pin any threat to me if you know the dear lady legend. But um, I was like, okay, so that I mean, all of that is not even like the strange part. It, I, I thought it was actually pretty cool because you know we're sitting there, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. This is literally there, it's just pasture land. There's a, a river off in the distance. I can hear the the drums and the, you know, fairly close. So it, it was nice, actually, until I went to go back to the car. And it was, um, it was Chris and I and my friend's wife, and she was in the lead, and she had the flashlight. And we're about halfway there, and you hear pow, pow, and then I hear a whizzing sound. Somebody was shooting at us. They were shooting at us. And what? Uh, yeah, that was like, that was the craziest investigation. Because, you know, I hit the ground. The girl with the flashlight's like, what's that? I'm like, turn it off. <laughs> turn off the light. It's a deck. Uh, yeah, pretty much. 
or you know just get away from me with the line at the end of the day. Um, and uh, probably yeah, getting so close to a something maybe a meth lab or a... yeah that's what I was thinking like and but I mean we weren't being quiet they I mean everybody knew we were there it was not a secret yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah. knew we were there um so I don't know like I had a lot of weird feelings just about the whole situation like I wasn't I thought it was cool with you know them trying to call it in I had like a weird feeling like just being let out into a field in the middle of the night you know I think we had planned on um on staying but I don't know that we I and this was so long ago I can't remember I want to say that we didn't plan on camping on their property but we had planned on staying like in a motel or somewhere, you know, locally for the night. And they were ended up, you know, offering us the use of their land. And all of us had, you know, SUVs or something that we could stay in. So we ended up staying. Um, and I was just feeling a little weird about the whole situation. And when, you know, I heard the shot, because I think they shot us two or three times. And then, you know, stop. And um, we eventually were able to get back to the vehicles. And, um, and I just remember thinking, I knew it, I knew it. But I mean, again, I could have just, could have just been in a bad place at a bad time. But that was like the craziest, that was like the craziest thing that happened during an investigation um, that I can think of. I mean, there were spooky, like spooky things. That was just straight scary and uh, and insane. Well, what drew you to that location? Did, like, uh, did you do research or did the somebody kind of come to you and um somebody came to there. us with a sighting yeah. and so we were investigating the sighting that this this okay. gentleman had i know chris isn't here but you know the writer said you know the chat's popping so i guess i'll put it in there i'm not chris but <laughs> we'll put it out there <laughs> the chat is hopping tonight good um no um <clears throat> Yeah, I always tell new squatchers, you know, if you're into an area where you don't know very well, be careful because people wonder why you go in armed. You go in armed because of the bad animals and because of people. Because the people that yeah. generally are in the middle of those woods are darn right yeah. crazy and will kill you and then yeah. bury you. And nobody will know what happens to you for years. You want to talk about missing 411. There's a good explanation to a lot of it. Yeah. Um, uh, I always say that <laughs> go to the go to the the usual suspects, and that's man. Um, especially that like that gentleman in Colorado, where they found his shoes, and then they found his backpack, and then and I don't think they ever found him. Um, but anyway, um, so now, what do you think has changed over the year? Now, here comes a tough question. Right? What do you? What's your take on the changes over the years? I mean, when we first got involved in research, a lot of us were talking on Yahoo email groups mm -hmm. and we were talking on forums. And that was, you know, mm -hmm. before Facebook ever existed, before, you know, and, and Monica mentioned a VHS tape earlier in case people don't know what that is, because there are people out there that have <laughs> no idea what a VHS oh tape is. Oh, my goodness. It looks like a big old cassette tape that you used to put in a player and hit play. The saying, um, yeah, not an A track. <laughs> Google that, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then when and then when the damn thing messed up, you all, you take the tape out and half the film is in the. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's Be gone kind, forever. Rewind. Gone no. forever. Yeah, I'm for good. <laughs> if that was your evidence. Yeah. I'm wah, sorry. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> um. So how has, has Bigfoot research changed over the years? And, and and I know with every good thing that comes, there's a bad thing that comes with it too. But what, what, in, in your opinion, what, what's changed so much? Um, there's good Lord. So much that changed. I mean, just the, the equipment that's available to you these days, I would have loved to have had back when, you know, we were, first starting out with the research. I would love to have had a drone with night vision capabilities or heat capabilities, you know? I had, I mean, and thermal cameras were tens of thousands of dollars back in the day. That was like some equipment that was out of reach for just, you know, 
Even night vision was expensive. Anybody, yeah. You know, and I've got, you know, I've got both now because <laughs> it's not that bad. But back in the day, yeah, that was, you know, that was very expensive equipment. And drones were, I don't even know if those were available back then. I didn't even think about something like that. I mean, even when the first FLIRs came out, they didn't have video capability. They could only take snapshots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and then, of course, you know, with Facebook and the groups and, and everything's so much easier, and the phones are so much more advanced now, just photography, you know, the ability to record everything. Um, we had to have, like, cameras around our neck. We had, like, camcorders, like, you know. <laughs> You know, like on the Goldbergs, like we had camcorders out in the field trying to to get, you know, shots of whatever's in front of you. So uh, it's just, it's so much easier. And then you would need like an IR spotlight to get anything good beyond 10 feet in the dark because a lot of the camcorders had an IR feature back then, which a lot of them do not now have. Yeah. And there was only, I remember there were only certain models that had that night capability. Yep. So, yeah. That was, I mean, we were, we were very limited. We were, <laughs> we were definitely at the disadvantage. And a lot of times the recorders were cassette tape. Again. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Little that, mini that, cassettes. Yeah. yeah. Now, now we have these, you know, for a, for a buck 75, you get yourself a high end recorder. They just put a little card into it and hit pl- record and it records yeah. for, for so a couple of days. Now. So much easier now yeah. with the GoPros. I mean, oh, shoot, yeah. I got like two but, or three GoPros, I think. <laughs> but you guys that were, were there with that older equipment, do you think mm-hmm. some of that evidence that was there was a little better than what we're getting now with the digital enhancements? I mean, I think it was it was more difficult to fake some of it. Like it's definitely easier to to put some to to alter things now for sure. Yeah, I just. You know, everybody going to the digital recorders and everything, I think you caught more on those old tapes that was in the background than, than what you get now. It seems to get filtered right out, out of the, you know, the wash. Mm. So, just just wondering if you've noticed and something, you know, all the new kids always want to go to the new technology, but we tend to lose a lot of that. It's there for our human voice, but now it's clicking in the back in the woods, you know? Right. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I think the the evidence that came out back then was a lot less than what's being put forth now, which is uh, probably a a bad side of social media because you get a lot of questionable videos that are coming out, and people wasting hours and hours of time on stuff that's, you know, uh, the person who recorded it didn't even see it. Mm. Yeah, and you know the same photos, like even photos from back in our day, keep making the circulation every now and then too, which I think yeah. is amusing. Right, 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 right. I'm like, if, if that's been like we've talked about this. Did we not talk about this 15 years ago? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the questions. The funny thing is, a lot of the questions haven't changed in in 20. I mean, I've been at this now 25 years, and none of the questions have changed. They're still the same questions that come up a lot of time and time again. Is Bigfoot dangerous? How many are there? Um, <laughs> is there only one Bigfoot? Sure. Yes. He, yeah, yeah. Yes. He, he has a frequent yeah. flyer card. He gets uh, from American sure Airlines and zips around the country. Yeah. Just opens um, that portal right up. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the portal potty. Um. Yeah, but can you imagine what people in the generation before us doing this had for equipment? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the old cassette record, like the old brick, press the button down recorders. You know, and you with the reel to uh, record it on. And, and you yeah. would have the, the reel and you'd have to spindle the reel and, okay, now I can hit record. And... Yeah, I have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know the 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 microphones were like yay big, right? <laughs> um, you know, and that's if you wanted to do that. So, um, you know, people talk about the Sierra sounds a lot, and then you know it's come into question and stuff like that. But people forget that Texas A and M evaluated them many years ago, 
in their bioacoustics lab and and, and we're kind of stumped by it mm-hmm. and uh, you know although you may have a guy on YouTube imitating those sounds um his, those sounds haven't been analyzed by bioacoustics and I wonder if they could say no that's that's a human you know it almost makes me wonder if if they would come up with not uh, uh, being able to identify that being a human versus that being unknown which is what Texas A&M basically said to the point where the professor that actually analyzed them stopped taking mm-hmm. calls because he was getting deluged constantly about it and uh that that's I think that is something we've seen over the years is you know uh people that come forth with information and they may be scientists or people and then they get deluged so much they disappear sure um and uh, Rich Bonesmith says, I remember running around the woods at 16 with a VHS camcorder inside of a washing machine. It looked like I was shooting the evening news. <laughs> and that's yes. true because the original ones you have to put on your shoulder and it would come with a battery pack that you would attach to your belt. Or it would come with a belt that you would have to and it would be all lined up. And, and then, you know, the battery life wasn't that great on them to begin with. You know, oh, I got 15 minutes of video. Time to recharge. Oh. <laughs> so. Hmm. I, you I know, got, I, I'm just, yeah. I'm thinking with the, with the development of AI and with AI being able to mimic just about anybody's voice, I wonder how long it's going to be before we start seeing, you know, people coming out with, oh, that's, that's Bigfoot sound. That's Sasquatch sound. And it's AI generated. Well, again, I, I think it all comes down to that investigation piece. What's yeah. the story behind it? Let's hear the whole audio. Let's not just hear the point of the Bigfoot. I think that's going to throw people off. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's how we're going to be able to identify that. It's just like any any type of video or picture that comes out. If it doesn't have a good story behind it or you're not willing to go out and talk about it, you know, it, it kind of leads you to where the... Um, uh, where it's going to uh, lead you to, which is a very disappointing ending. Um, question, here we go. So, Monica, with both of your GoPros, do you position them with each one front behind to uh, capture visuals during your hikes? If so, have you captured anything of interest that might might have been lost? Um, I don't, yeah. I, I, I haven't used them recently, uh, but, yeah, that's a good that's a good uh, technique to use is front and behind, because I think that if there is activity going on in the area, you don't know what's going on behind you. I have not caught anything. Like I said, that that's fabulous. Uh, Yeah. As I've been out on my research or, you know, anything that I can't say hasn't been replicated. I definitely haven't caught anything on my GoPros. And GoPros are quite limited anyway. I mean, I don't know if you have the night vision GoPros because I remember when they first came out, they had that night vision capability. Of course, now the new ones don't have that anymore. It's all daytime, mm-hmm. which I think is a, a darn shame. That is. I, if, I, I see I, night vision I, just go. I, I think Mike can probably hack them to uh, make them go night vision. In I, areas. I, I, I actually got a guy hacking some cheap ones now. You got to go in and just pull the filters out of them. Um, but I know me, I'll end up breaking them. So I got somebody hacking them, but you can hack them. And then the battery issue was always a problem. They just came out with a battery pack. That's like a chest mount. So you can plug them in instead of plugging the old cell phone battery packs. And so having them front and back, Monica, is, you know, great. I know a lot of guys were using, um, what do you call it? Like the motorcycle, um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, auto cams, you know, oh. traffic cameras. That's it. You know, mine's in the Jeep, you know, not there, but you know, that that'll work as well for power. But uh, yeah, you can hack the little ones. You just got to pull the filters out, crack them and pull them. You know, and I don't know, uh, as far as the GoPro, the GoPro I have, I get about three hours, four hours on a battery. So, I mean, and I have three batteries for it. So literally I go 12 hours of, of straight filming. Not that I normally straight film. I film sporadically on and off with it, but mm-hmm. But I mean, usually it's it's solid stuff, and that's you know, like I said, the battery technology has gotten a lot better too in the in the last couple of years as well. And I think you know, with the advent of electric vehicles, it's kind of spawned a 
an offshoot into these devices that, you know, you can, I mean, heck, I, my watch can last two days, two and a half days, three days without even being charged now. Whereas the old you know, smart watches used to charge it every day. Otherwise it'd be dead. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think battery technology is coming a long way, which is a great thing. I mean, I have a, um, uh, a progeny um, battery pack that I charge stuff on and I use it, you know, over a period of two or three days and I'm doing heavy charges and it trains at maybe 20, 25%. Uh, what's Mike showing us now? Oh, he's got a, he's muted. I'm muted like usual battery pack, but <laughs> even one of the box stores the other day, I can't remember which one they actually, one of the big tool manufacturers now has a backpack that's just a giant battery. So you can plug all your, uh, lawn tools into, but, uh, and, and going back to the GoPro, you know, if you're wearing them on the back and it's like, Oh, it's going to be all shaky and stuff. There's some lenses. I know Matt from Florida, central Florida, Bigfoot's got one. It's, it's got a stabilizer lens right in there. And we hooked that up to his truck driving down the road. And it's like having a gimbal, you know, That's right nice. there in front, you know? Yeah. I've got a, um, uh, what you call it like a stick mount. That's a gimbal. For front views, which is nice. Inside joke. Um, uh, <laughs> Media Palace asks, uh, "Where, where in Texas do you do research now?" I don't do as much anymore uh, over the last few years, but in Texas, uh, if, when I do do my research, it's going to be northeast Texas and still in the east eastern area of Texas because I find that that's where the bulk of the reports are is East Texas. You know, if I can get out in the Texarkana area, I do still like it out there. My, Mike, did you say a word that every time you say it, you have to drink? What is that word? Gimbal. <clears throat> if you hang out with Matt from Florida, <laughs> it, it it's one of those things. He's gotten all of us hooked on that wonderful instrument. So... Yeah. And Christy's my co-host for my podcast. So yeah, it's so bad that I had to, you know, go out and get one myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> um do you get into uh Sam Houston National Forest much? I have been into Sam Houston, yeah. So. I did do some research back in there. Nice area or not? I've I've got some family in 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 Houston and I need to get down there and catch up with like scott from bigfoot mapping projects so i'd really in what your thoughts are in that area and yeah i mean there were some decent reports coming out of there there's a lot of feral hog activity back in there that's you know makes it a little sketchy <laughs> to get in there but uh but as far as you know sightings and and research goes it's, it's a great area to go into um when i was living in east texas um i went in there quite a bit to do some research. Um, I know that, um, my goodness, I can't remember the gentleman's name. There's a researcher that, that still does quite a bit of research down in there. And he finds, he finds a lot of things um, that are interesting. Um, and um, I mean, the reports that come out of there are, are, are great. So, I mean, if you have an opportunity to get in there, I really recommend it. Cool. Thank you. And, um, Here's a question from uh, Mr. Federal uh, saying, any dogmen spotted in your investigations in Texas? Have you ever came across any dogman uh, reports while you're... Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Yes. Actually, not far from where I live now there was one where somebody said um that i wasn't researching uh bigfoot but a friend of mine got the report and he was telling me about it because he knows that i do i i'm also interested in in the dogman research so anytime he hears something he he shares it with me and he had uh gotten a report of somebody seeing one off a county road not far from where i live currently um which is uh kind of north mm, uh, north central texas um very close to the border with oklahoma 
That's got to put your head on a swivel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, I mean, that's not something that I necessarily would want to run across yeah. while I'm out doing a, a report investigation, you know. I'm looking for one thing and you find another, but that seems to be what happens. You know, I, you go out looking for one thing and you stumble across something else. I mean, that it's happened to me. You know, I go out looking for, for Bigfoot and I stumble across, you know, something that's maybe paranormal, you know, like ghost related um, or seemingly ghost related or just weird. Uh, things like that are, yeah, it happens. It, I, I would just not want to come across a dog man while I'm, you know, in the middle of the woods. <laughs> and, and those Texas sightings really sound like they're really on the increase, you know. And I don't know. Do you know Aaron yeah. Deese at all? Ah, uh, no. No, I don't. He, he's he's there in Texas and stuff. And he had a lot of they had no one talk with him about these sightings and stuff like that down in there. Um, so kind of interesting, kind of like a little triangle area. You kind of found some sightings, you know, and. Oh, where you're at down to like Austin and over. So, oh, the Dogman Triangle. Yeah, yeah. There's always a triangle somewhere, you know. But it's... somewhere, <laughs> yeah. Be a triangle, not the Dogman Hexagon. Yeah. Right, we got a couple of more questions yeah. coming yes. up. Yep. So first one up is uh, Chris from Christie. That's uh, Mike's uh, podcast partner. Hi, Monica. Where is the place you'd want to investigate your bucket list place? Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Tough My course. bucket list place is um, it's the Headless Valley, the Valley of the Headless Men up in BC. Because that is a fascinating story to me. And it went on like, I want to say, and I could be wrong, but I want to say into the 40s or 50s, the 1940s or 50s, you know, there were still like some crazy things happening up in that valley and i i want to go there i want to go there and see what's going on there because uh the first nation stories you know are pretty spooky and and clearly there's all the the killings and murders that took place in there and um i would like very much to go in there and just see what i can find hopefully keep my head while i'm at it that would be super. That's not where they're seeing the woolly mammoths and everything, too, is it? Ooh, I haven't heard that. It may be. It may be, but I haven't heard that. So, and Brian Barber asks, um, Monica says she hasn't found anything she couldn't replicate. What's the best evidence you've found so far? Um, Tough audience. <laughs> I mean... That's, I, I'll tell you if I <laughs> the best evidence I found so far. Uh, well, because I haven't found anything I can't replicate, I haven't found like the the best. But I'm really critical when I go out to do my research, so um, I'm really tough like on myself, and I'm really tough on what's presented to me. Uh, I'm just trying to think like the. I would say the best evidence that that I found are just their tracks, like you know. I was going to say like I, that, I don't even that know that they, I could say that they were tracks. They're more imprints, but you know, you cast everything and just you know hope for the best. You know, because you learn from your rookie mistakes of not carrying casting materials <laughs> with you when you go out in the field. <laughs> so you just cast everything, and I mean, really, to me, that's the best the best evidence, but that's still not a hundred percent foolproof because if you're going into areas with known activity or just, you know, some Yahoo out there thinking it's hilarious to put on some, some fake tracks and go wandering through a national park and, you know, you're just in an area. I mean, I think that that's pretty slim chance of running across something like that, but it's still not impossible. Um, but to me, you know, finding a track in the middle of nowhere is going to be your best piece of evidence because you know who's going to have that large of a bare footprint in the middle of nowhere you know Skamania County Washington I, that would be the best evidence that I, I you know I, I, I remember hopping a fence on the private property going in about 50 75 yards onto it and coming across a freaking track yeah 
I mean, it's like, this is private property. We're not even supposed to be here. It's just really remote. And uh, we're exactly. looking for a river crossing, and here's this print. <laughs> you yeah. Know, and it, you know. So, I mean, I mean that, it, they, it's things like that, and, and it's cases like that. You know, I, and I can't even really call the things that I found prints. I found, I found impressions, right? And I cast right. them, and they, and they seem to be tracks. I haven't found like just the you know a beautiful pristine footprint somewhere. I have never found that. This was pretty pristine. It was like uh, it was just like this little patch of dirt in this grassy area, and almost and into the north side of the or the upper side of it. There's this print. Like you're kidding me, right? <laughs> Fresh. I mean, you could go, and we just went all over the place. Oh, so that was like that's pretty weird. Um. Bob Hip asks, uh, you remember good old Bob Hip from uh, I the... I remember him. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kettle Lake always looked like a good area along, also along the Sabine mm -hmm. River bottoms. Didn't you ever get a chance to research in those areas? Oh, yeah. I love Cat. Oh, I love Caddo. Actually, I go there every chance I get. I love Caddo Lake. It's a wonderful place to get out to. It is just um, prehistoric looking. If you're able to get out there and get down in the bottoms of the sloughs, um, I mean, you've got the old cypress trees with that Spanish moss hanging off of them. And if if you can get a kayak and get back in there, it is amazing to get in there. Um, I've researched um, where you can. A lot of uh, the land, you know, outside of the state park that's directly um, on the lake is private. So it's a little tricky. You got to kind of, you know, work your way in there. Um, but I, I do research in there when I can. I've, I've gone along the river bottoms. I have found footprints that looked interesting, you know, in along the, the river bottoms, but they're also very near swimming holes. So, if, you know, I, I can look at it and say, it's got the straight, you know, toes going straight across. It's not a typical, you know, yeah, yeah. human or, track. Or, uh, but, yeah. you know, it, I mean, it's not unusual for people to be barefoot along a, a river bed either. Yeah. So. You know. yeah. And uh, I agree with you, Steve, who said, uh, I'm not sure on the dogman thing at all. I, I tend to agree with you there. Um, I'm not sold on the dogman because anthropologically and skeletally, it doesn't look like something with dog legs can go walking proficiently into the forest mm -hmm. or have those little paws. You know, and I say little paws, I know the paw prints are like that big, supposedly, but Again, it, it just doesn't seem conducive to um, going through. Yeah, the... I mean, it, I, I get it. And I mean, until you see one, I'm sure like that's very difficult to like believe in really anything. I mean, I don't fully believe in big, but I've seen it, you know, don't fully believe in, you know, anything that's, you know, mythological, so to say, until you, you actually see it. And that's what, you know, I always tell people is, you know, until I see it for myself, I'm gonna, I'm not out to prove this. And, you know, even in when I was right. in the thick of it with the research, I was never out to prove it to the world. I'm out to prove it to myself because I can't prove it to the world until I prove it to myself. And that's why I'm so critical with with all the evidence that was ever presented to me. And that's why I feel like everybody should be. So what keeps you going, Monica, then on this, this journey? I mean, the... I believe in the possibility and I want to know. I mean, people are seeing something. So, I mean, I want to prove it to myself. I'd love to be able to, to do that. That's what keeps me going. Thank you. Now we have a comment from Raptor Crazy who says anybody can go camping and record and say it's Bigfoot when it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, true. Sure. But, yeah. But why, but why would they? You know, attention. Well, I'm just saying that when you have a witness that does not want to be known, wants yeah. to give it to you and say, hey, I, I, you know, I really don't want to get in the thick of this. I just want to give you this. This is where I'll take you out to this place. I'll, I'll show you where I got X, Y, and Z or where I saw X, Y, and Z. They'll take you there, but I don't want to get, you know, and they'll meet you there and they'll answer all your questions. And they want nothing out of it except to give you that knowledge. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing that's just somebody making a story up. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, and, somebody, uh, yeah, I mean, the person's behavior, if, if you see something 
and you know nobody's going to believe you, are you going to go tell everybody? I mean, right. and then the few people that you do tell don't believe you or they make fun of you. Are you going to keep that to yourself? You know, and then when the story does finally come out, or, you know, you start being more comfortable and telling it to more people. You and know, I know those are I, more I, those I, are more believable stories to me. And and you know, I right. I've seen some crazy thing. I've seen something. I've seen something, and I don't like talking about it because it sounds crazy. And and I mean, you know me, and yeah. I'm I'm very serious and I'm very honest, and I don't like talking about it because I think it makes me sound crazy. So. It, it's a very unbelievable thing, and I don't, I don't like talking about it. I mean, I've told some people, but I mean, that's why I try to be. I mean, I'm critical with the evidence that comes before me. I always have been, and I, and I probably always will be. But at the same turn, like I am in that position where I've seen something that is would be considered insane by a lot of people, and I, I don't want to be. <laughs> I really don't want the ridicule, but I mean, and. It, it's it's a very difficult position to be in, so I try to be sensitive to that when people are telling me a story. Yeah. Does that make sense? Perfectly, because and I and I remember <laughs> how, you know, my first sighting, I had people all, you know, I had people a couple hundred feet away from me or a hundred feet away from me. So it was, it was, you know, okay, I just saw this. Let's get the team out there. Let's move. The second mm -hmm. one I saw, and, and the funny thing was, is Wayne and Melissa were sleeping in a tent twenty feet from me. I remember and, them telling me about that. Yeah, and Jeff, and you know, I pop out of the tent, and there's a juvenile. I, I was like, no, nah, I, I just didn't see that. I, 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 I couldn't have. Trying to convince myself, I didn't see that. And then the next morning, Jeff goes, "Hey, I found a log," and I didn't say nothing, a thing, until I found this log, you know, behind my jeep. And then I, well, uh, all right, I'm going to spill the beans. Yeah. So <laughs> this is what happened. And then Wayne and Melissa start looking around when they find a track. And But um, you're surrounded by people who are out there looking for that, right? So these right. are people who are already in the mindset to accept the story that you're saying. I mean, imagine right. being somebody who's surrounded by people who yeah. are like, right. 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 You yeah. know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but to me, I was even like, oh, you know, I I'm not gonna say a thing. I, I just you know, it was just on to me it was so unbelievable to see a juvenile. It, it was like, no, I, I couldn't have just seen a five and a half foot squatch running through the woods. I, I, I couldn't have. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you see crazy things. I mean, the, I mean, the strange things that I've seen while, while out investigating. I mean, yeah, I always be like, did I really see that? No. Yes. No. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do that to yourself, right? Because you're, you're being critical of what's in front of you. Like you doubt yourself sometimes. Okay, um, got a couple of more things, and let me address this one first. Mr. Federal, do you believe in a nine-foot Bigfoot? Well, I, I believe they don't get much bigger than eight-foot, to tell you the truth, but but deny all reports of a dogman, and I don't deny the reports of somebody seeing something tall and bipedal. I'm just saying the legs are not built for anthropologically they're not, and, and bio, I should say biologically, physiologically, they're not built to walk bipedal. So when people report a dogman as having dog-like legs with, with paws, um, there's an issue there because that, that would be not conducive to just walking around. Uh, I mean, you see how awkward a dog walks when they, they, they do the little walker. You know, if you train a dog to walk on its hind legs, they walk very strangely because their skeletal system is built to walk quadrupedally, not bipedally. And when you have something that tall and it's still, and everybody's saying it look has the same structure as a quadruped, then there's an issue with that. It's not a matter of necessarily denying them that report, but it, to me, it makes no sense how something could maneuver or exist like that without some kind of evolutionary change. So that's why. Um, I 
Low Rider, of course, asked the question, has she discarded Diet Beach Snapple bottles in the woods? I would turn and run. Um, what? <laughs> there's a running joke about Diet Peach Snapple here. Um, Diet Peach Snapple? Yeah, well, here it is. Are you Bigfooters thirsty out there? Well, I suggest to get a delicious, refreshing Snapple. Yes, even the most famous Bigfoot rush to the store to get themselves their favorite beverage, a delicious peach Snapple. No need to be cranky when you can just ask just keep it, keep your loved one right for a delicious I I beverage. Talk. Got it? Y'all get me a Snapple. And don't be in such a hurry, there's plenty at the store. Diet peach snapple. Try delicious peach snapple. Y'all get me a snapple. And that is our snapple story. <laughs> That's from Dick in Arizona. <laughs> I have a Topo Chico, if you know what that is. <laughs> no, it's something not native to New York. That's <laughs> um. So yeah, I haven't run that commercial in a while, so that was kind of worth it. So thank you, Low Rider, for inspiring me to run the commercial, so everybody can get in on the joke about the discarded peach snapple bottles. <laughs> Media has got something there about the Converse Texas werewolf. I'm going to go back and take a look at that because I'm, I'm kind familiar of familiar with that story. The Converse uh, Converse Texas. Yeah, is that the one that yeah. shoot on the minivan? Oh, is that one? Is no. that the is that the dog man with the good kicks? No, Converse is the one um, happened like way like quite a while ago. It's the um, man sent his son out hunting. Kid was not much of a hunter. He sent him out hunting. Told him not to come back without a deer. The kid came back and said, "There's something following me. It's spooking me down in the bottoms." And the dad said, "Yeah, sure, okay. Get get back out there. Don't come back without a deer." So he forced his son to go back out there. Well, it. Time went on. Son didn't come back. Dad got worried, went out, looked for his son, and um, found the kid uh, with a dog man basically eating it, eating him. And they um, <laughs> shot at it. And that's Converse story in a nutshell, of course. <laughs> now, was the, was the dog man on two feet or was it on four? I don't know. I just remember it being hunched over the sun and then they shot at it and it ran off but i have heard stories of the dog man being on four and then they hear a popping sound which i assume is it popping its tips out so it can stand up bipedally <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so really I, I i just i, I don't know about it it's, it just sounds a lot a lot weird i mean for a while we were people were talking about chupacabras in Texas and uh, completely different mm -hmm. looking from the chupacabras as originally reported from Puerto Rico. And oh, yeah. you have, what you end up is having all these yotes with mange. And yeah. uh, that was what they were calling um, the blue um, dogs, the, the blue dogs or the, the chupacabras or, um, but a so, chupacabra, yeah. like a chupacabra is what was coming out of, Puerto Rico, right? It's right. a little lizard thingy with the spines down right. its back. That's a chupacabra. Right. right. But so many people were calling those hairless dogs chupacabras. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that luckily that got quashed within a couple of years, I think, because yeah. I think there was that deputy sheriff that saw one that had it on his dash cam and ducked into the woods. Not a chupacabra, but one of these yotes know, with mange. And then they found another one. And I think Ken Gerhardt reported on that. Yeah, it's just a coyote with mange, everybody. That's all yeah. they are. And that kind well, of killed sure. it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to. So, uh, uh, um, um, um. That's very interesting. Uh, Brian Barber says, I think they could grow over eight feet, but maybe it's a location thing. Big ones in Michigan, smaller ones. Now, the, the Bigfoot in Texas, are they similar in size to, say, the skunk ape, which is normally not your seven foot or eight foot ones, but usually they're around six foot, between six and seven feet? Yeah, I would think so. Like, it's the same region. Like, uh, 
climate wise. Right. I would I would imagine, yeah. So I agree. And we are going to, uh, folks, we are going to cut off at 1030 tonight, Eastern, uh, just because we got to get Mike off the air because right. uh, he's got to go to work tomorrow. Here? Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. The computer turns into a pumpkin and the Doberman <laughs> will eat my computer. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's that time. Yeah. You know, bedtime for her. So my so podcast room comes. is her. Yeah. <laughs> Doberman and the Shepherd come in here together. And, and, he, and he won't get the jar back with his small old Rolos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Monica, is there a particular hair color you guys are seeing in, in your areas that you're researching there with the uh, the swamp areas mm. between, you know, um, that little area, that little yeah. three state area, four state area? The, um, well, brown seems to be predominant but you hear gray as well which makes sense i mean it would it would blend in easier with the spanish moss um but i would say predominantly it's the brown the brown colors for sure but closer to that spanish moss brown gray there so yeah i mean we do hear like obviously reports of gray or gray colors okay. coming through okay <laughs> no 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 i'm all, i'm all, i'm always interested in, in vegetation and and color schemes and well no 100 percent. i mean that's just you know you would imagine that would be evolutionary for you know camouflage yeah 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 definitely mm -hmm. so i'm just watching the chat and i had a question and i completely forgot it because i was reading the chat instead of focusing on the question but that's okay <laughs> um oh yes i know i remember uh, what's your impression of the Fort Worth monster? The oh, white uh, big. I don't know about that one. I don't. Oh, know. Yeah, it's all it's all good. It's all fair. I mean, I'm kind of on the is. fence with that. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people witnessed it. It threw a tire. Pretty decent, you know, a pretty decent uh, distance. But um, you know, I've I've been out to where it was decided i mean it's possible it's possible of course you know but like with everything no evidence there i didn't see yeah. it yeah. yeah and no evidence to <laughs> really support it and yeah, I mean, um, outside of eyewitness you know i mean testimony. i i i i think it's really important like when i asked you that very first case you talked about where you had found the tr the the print or the mm -hmm. the, the impression um, I, I, I think that that's, you know, huge in the fact that you're finding at least something corroborative. And that's what I try to look for in my witness statements. Like we had one in Whitehall where we have five people see it over the uh, twice. You know, we have three people and then two people see the same thing over a period of about a half hour. And I actually managed to find where it had trailed out of the woods. And uh, all the tree breaks were up at the, you know, five, nine, five, ten, six foot level, you know, right straight through the woods. Nice path clear. No tracks, of course, but you can see something large had bouldered through there and to the road. And that's where I lost it. And, you know, at least that you're able to corroborate. Hey, listen, you know, we, we, we don't know if it's a big foot, but something large did go through here and we know that much. And, um, you know, at least finding a, a piece of physical evidence to corroborate their story, I think, is mission well done. You know, it's uh, part of our job to do that. And, um, you know, and I, of course, as the fan base knows and Mike knows, my philosophy is my job's not to prove Bigfoot exists. My job is to get evidence, give it to science, and they can prove whether it exists or not. That's my mm -hmm. job as an investigator doing this. Um, For us rookies, when was that Fort Worth... Fort Worth um incident it's back 60s? in the 90s huh okay. was it six was it better was 60s, it better yeah. yeah okay all right i'll do a little, a little uh little deep dive on that for my own research for and uh, media palace media palace says i think the fort Worth was a hoax two photos that are like 10 feet away yeah yeah i mean, I mean yeah you know, like, does it says i mean it does not look like a uh, if you're talking about that picture of the white fort worth monster the blurry um, one yeah let I me mean, see if i can uh, pull it, that up i mean you're kind of limited of course with the with what was available at the time it is a very right. old photo but yeah it's it's super grainy 
There we go. See if we can't uh, pop that picture up. Now nah, we just got to find it for a second. Right. Is it one of those all white Bigfoot photos? There you go, Mike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I think you've mentioned that one in the past, Steve. Yes. I think we talked about it with Craig uh, when Craig Will later was on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. like, yeah, I think that's what got Craig initially interested in it when he was a young. Okay, and child. let me let me let me explain something to wrap. There's no proof that Bigfoot breaks branches when they walk or anything else. Can't go by stories. Okay, Raptor, let me give you a little tracking 101. Everything breaks branches when they walk. We do, the deer do, the moose do, the bear do. And they all have different levels. Bear, deer, moose. And the only thing that breaks branches about the similar to a, a Sasquatch is a moose. And you know what? That's not evidence. That's not proof. That's just experience. And that's experience of doing this for 25 years. I've tracked plenty of animals. Plenty. All animals break branches. Now, are you trying to say that Bigfoot just mysteriously moves through the forest without disturbing any of the terrain? Because that's pretty whack. Same. Mm -hmm. All right. Mick's got a question there. Uh, there it is. The next question I have is Sasquatch are reported to be more aggressive in Texas. What uh, are, are reported to be more aggressive in Texas? What's your assessment of that? Mm, I don't think I've run across that. I think, I really think that the issue of the southern Sasquatch as being more aggressive was a direct result of the legend of Boggy Creek and the mm, watching. I don't of that know that that was really aggression as much as curiosity and then a reaction to, you know. Right. But the, the fact, right. Yeah. But the fact that, that, what was his name? Ford, Bobby Ford got knocked down or whatever by oh, the creature or whatever. And then he got yeah. sent to the Texarkana hospital. I think that built up the reputation that the Southern Sasquatches are more aggressive than, than not. Well, I mean, let's, let's take a, a look. Like I, and then there's I mean, some unconfirmed real, ones. Yeah. Well, I mean, if these things are real, we're talking about a wild animal. All right. We're talking about a wild animal in my opinion. Okay. So you want to go hug it? <laughs> like, Go in, go, go in a, a chimp cage. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Go in a you chimp did. cage you at a zoo and try to hug one. What's going to happen? Anything on a bad day, it's going right. to be aggressive. Anything, a person, you can have the nicest person in the world on a bad day or, you know, you know, I, I just, I don't believe they're all just super friendly. I don't believe they're all super aggressive. I think that it just, it depends. Like it, individuals are different. Um, what's going on at that time is different. Is it mating season? Is it not mating season? Is there a food shortage? Is there, is it their territory? Is there a young one nearby? Like what's going on? There's a lot of factors that can, that could be brought into like any, <coughs> any creatures, um, you know, actions, you know, in, in, in any given moment, yep. in my opinion. Right. Well, we got five minutes left. We should kind of wrap this up real quick. Uh, real quick, Brian Barber made a comment that the DNR uh, always tells me all the tree breaks and tr uh, tracks and rock throwing and tree knocks were bears, um, according to the <laughs> Michigan DNR. Yeah, sure they are. Um, yeah, like, like that rock that Mike and I had thrown on us on a live podcast a couple of years ago up on Lincoln Mountain in Saratoga County, New York, where I and mean, I were just standing there and huh? That yeah, that bear. was a bear, and and this, <laughs> and and literally, it was so loud that even the 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 podcast the the audio on the phone I was using to broadcast the podcast because we had a base station, we had a field remote, and you could hear this thing going <laughs> hitting rock on rock as we were standing on rock, and it was oh, la it landing within three feet of our feet, and then we listened to Mike who had his recorder. We listened to Mike's recorder, and it was even that much louder where you can actually hear the trees, the branches going. Yeah. 
It's like my, that happens with Mike and I. We get rocks thrown in us a lot when we're a together. A lot. <laughs> you're your, your jokes and my cooking, I guess, you know. Yeah, I tell you. yeah making cookies in a bag. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's Mike's claim to fame in camp one day. I'm like, why do you smell like a genie bakery out here? And I look, and there's Mike <laughs> with this little, little uh, you know, put it over the fire for a few seconds, and then, you know, or whatever, the chemical reaction thing, and he's sitting there, and the bag is steaming. And he goes, oh, they're cookies. And he pulls my, out a chocolate chip cookie. I'm like, my Ohm's meal chocolate chip cookies. Gotta love them. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like Mike, Mike glamping over there. You know, he's got a fresh out of the oven chocolate chip cookie while, while we're sitting here looking at a can of SpaghettiOs. Right. You got to take Max Powers with you that Matt takes. I watched him do a whole freaking pork tenderloin one day with the vegetables and the whole the whole spread. Like, literally, I was waiting for the queen to show up. So, so <sighs> Raptor asked me, please make a show about what, with moose and deer and everything else that's going on with these tree bakes. Let me explain something to you. Well, if I ever find a moose, I spent two weekends ago driving around the Adirondacks with. Let, no me, let me give you a good good place instead of me doing a show which will bore the shit out of people for two hours talking about free breaks of bears and stuff like that. That may be good for a blog or maybe even a, a, a YouTube short or something like that or a YouTube. But if you really want to know about tracking, here is one great book. You know, the track tracker's handbook by Len McDougal, very good book. It'll show you all the it'll teach you about tracks, how to track, all that wonder stuff. The other one, of course, is the Peterson Field Guide to Animal Tracks. And it will also show you um you know, scat samples, uh deer um deer ruts, all that wonderful stuff. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm very well read on the topic. So uh that's in the other library. I'm not going to, I don't really want to do a, tr a show, entire show and bore everybody just talking about known animal tracks. The attraction of this is the mystery. Um, uh, pre record something and put it up on your YouTube channel, and the people that want to be bored can be bored. That's right. That's right. But I got to go out and I actually got to find the brakes now. <laughs> Because, you know, when I go through the woods, oh, yeah, that's a deer break. Yeah, yeah. What, what, you know, actually, deer break may be easy for me to find now because I've got a family of deer. I haven't seen them in about a week, but they they like coming out in my backyard and munching on stuff and then disappearing back into the woods. Um, Alex has got that trail cam in his back with the moose that he's got, and so does Bean. So they may have some video for us that we can use. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have 14 different mammals right now that I've caught off my trail cam, ranging from a field mouse to a bobcat. So, yeah, but you moved my, away from the moose. Your old neighborhood, you had moose in your old neighborhood. I, you know. Yeah, but I never saw them. Yeah. I never saw the damn moose. I got more. I, I think the moose will show up here more likely than over in the old neighborhood. I want to see a moose. I've never seen a moose. Like I said, I drove around the Adirondacks two weekends ago and no right, moose. Very exciting. Nothing. No a lot moose. of, lot of fisher cats dead on the side of the road, and a lot of deer. No, <laughs> no moose this time. So, and uh, a couple of things. Uh, Brian Barber like to say thank you, Monica, for coming on tonight, and thank you, Mike, for filling in for Chris. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And uh, I, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. It's been fun. And well, it's always you. fun talking, you know, you haven't been on, you know, since the old blog talk days. And I figured it'd be nice and refreshing to get a familiar face that, that I've known over the years. Come on the, the podcast again. And, but this time we're doing it on YouTube and we've been on YouTube now for over five years, believe it or not. It's hard Wonderful. to believe. It's hard to believe it's been that long. I mean, it just, I, I tell Chris that Chris is like, where'd the time go? It seems like we just did this maybe a couple of years ago. <laughs> Well, you're having fun. That's why it goes by That's so quickly, it. right? That's <laughs> it. And um, I appreciate you know, the education is the new kid on the block. So, you know. <laughs> and that's the wonderful thing about this this medium is that we can show pictures. We can do pictures on the fly like the Fort Worth monster. Um, we start talking about that. I can get on the computer real quick and boom, there it is. 
So that's the cool thing about you can this. Show me Snapple commercials too. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> the other, the uh, the other thing we too can do is uh, do one of these. Now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> So let's end on a laugh. Monica, thanks for coming on tonight. It's been, Thank you. been my honor to have you on. So I appreciate it so much. Thanks and, for uh, having me. It's been so much fun. And be safe out there. Keep in contact. And uh, we'll, you know, if something happens, let me know and vice versa. Sure so, will. And uh, Mike, as always, thanks for filling in for, for Joe. What, what do you got coming up next? uh me next thing we'll see you in whitehall in two weeks we're gonna hit that and then i got a couple events up my way it's a couple of fundraisers and stuff but yeah the next one's whitehall so come catch us there uh i'll be on we'll we'll get on live and stuff like that so monica thank you for the info for the new kid on the block so i appreciate it so thank you and chris we'll see you next week so. yes chris i hope you're feeling better next week anyway uh again folks you know, Joe and his family need our support. Joe Snyder, as we know, he's, you know, hate to say this, terminally ill with cancer. Uh, looks like he's going to be coming home Monday. That's what he told and, me yesterday. So, And uh, let's hope so, because he's starting to move around a little bit. Um, you know, his cancer is now in his bones. Yeah. And that's a rough place to be. So, uh, folks, there's the GoFundMe for him. I uh, remember Joe was just a private contractor, door dasher. You know, and um, this family is going to need our support and our, our help. And like I said, Molly uh, out there, she's welcome in my camp any day. And she's kind of making it her mission now to prove that, you know, Bigfoot does exist because of her husband's sighting. So and uh, his dedication and she didn't really believe in it. But now she's kind of changing a bit to say, I believe my husband. So, which is, and I've been to that location with Joe and I promised Molly that we'd get her back out to there and get her, get her there. Promised him as well. Yep. So folks on behalf of me and Mike, and uh, again, thanks Monica. I want everybody to have a happy and safe, healthy week. And um, let me just kick one thing off here. We can hide that. There we go. I want to wish everybody happy, healthy, safe week. Um, be safe out there. We'll catch you all next week, Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern here on Squatch TV. And, of course, keep on squatching, folks. We'll see you all next week. Hey, folks, you've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.